animals. Uh, my name is Shannon Cutts. I'm an animal intuitive and sensitive and animal communicator here at AnimalLoveLanguages.com. And this is Pearl, for those of you who are watching the YouTube version of our podcast, our vlogcast, I guess. He is my 23-year-old feathered sidekick. He's been with me since he's, he was five weeks old, and he never misses an episode, even when it conflicts with his contractually stipulated neck feather scratching sessions, right? Okay. And um, here on Let's Talk with Animals, we are always looking for new information about what it's like to, to, to experience interspecies communication. And so we're trying to de-woo it, if you will, will, to demystify it, to open up the wonderful world of animal communication to everyone, all species, including the human species, including the human animal. So this morning, all the way from India, we have Akshaya Kaule. And I know I didn't do that perfectly. She practiced, we, we, she gave me a little tutorial before. I actually uh, was just sharing with Akshaya that I lived in Mumbai for about six months at around um, 2006, 2007. And it's like a really soft spot for just all of my memories and everything about it and the absolute stunning beauty of the part of the country that I was living in. And so I'm so really, I'm really grateful to be able to share your work. You have so much going on and hordes of eager students. And I love the simplicity with which you share the work that you do with the world. And so I'm really excited to share your work here on the show as well. Um, even though we're speaking with you at a time in your journey where, you know, you're professional, you are able to kind of tune in and tap in on demand when somebody needs you. And yet here on the show, we have a lot of aspiring animal communicators. We have a lot of newbie animal communicators. We have a lot of um, what I would call in, inquiring um, maybe prospective animal communicators that are just intrigued, maybe don't even think that they can do it. And so I always like to invite our guests to just take us back to the beginning of your journey and kind of share how this unfolded for you. And we'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Uh, first of all, Shannon, you said my name perfectly. So thank you so oh, much thank for you that. For, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. And thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be invited by communicators across the globe and sharing our stories because I feel even though we do pretty much the same kind of work, there's so much of diversity in what we do and there's so much of learning from these communications that we have. And since it's such a personal practice, each one of us get a very different flavor on the table and that's the beauty of it that it's a personal practice and we can learn from each other so it's always a pleasure to be interacting with uh, other communicators and people who take an interest in what we do so thank you so much for having me. it's a pleasure it's being here. so my, my journey honor. began thank you so much my journey began i think when I was about three, four years old, as a uh, as someone who took great interest in animals. So I grew up in a family of 16 people. We used to live in a joint family. And I was the youngest uh, <laughs> member of the family. So when everyone used to have their afternoon siestas, I obviously didn't want to sleep, didn't want to nap. So I used to go out and I used to play with the cats outside our building in our apartment complex or what we would typically call as veranda and that's where my journey began because they were my confidants they were my friends I didn't have a lot of people my age around me at that time apart from my school so they were my friends and I remember explicitly having two-way conversations with these cats and as I grew older of course it all became a figment of my imagination for me and I never thought a lot about it it was only much later um, in 2008 actually we had our first animals home as companion animals and that's where my journey with animals began in 2014 December I got married and in 2015 I took a year-long sabbatical from work I'm originally a communication skills consultant with the corporates and I used to train middle and high level management 
on communication skills, focusing on nonverbal communication, presentation skills, and public speaking. So now, so to say, my my work has kind of just expanded from communication with humans to now also animals and humans. And that's how I look at my work and what I do now. So in that year-long sabbatical, I had a lot of time to engage with things that I like to do. And that's when I came across this beautiful video by uh, Anna Breitenbach, another senior communicator, where she was speaking with uh, uh, now spirit, then Diablo, the black leopard. And that just instantly took me back to my memories of talking to the cat. And um, as synchronicity would have it, I don't want to call it a coincidence, but the synchronicity yes. of it all was such that my first animal friend was a jet black cat uh, with the same kind of beautiful eyes that spirit had. So it just took me back to my days as a child when I would spend my afternoon with this cat speaking to her and telling her how my day was and and in my head, the cat answering to me as well. So that's how my journey began. And I intuitively started speaking with my dogs who used to be at my mom's house uh, because my husband and I didn't have animal companions at, at that time. And it became easier for me that way because I could cross check with my mom and get my validations mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, so I would call her up and ask her, okay, have they eaten this today or are they doing this today? And it got easier that way. I also used to foster a lot for abandoned and rescued animals by an NGO that I'm associated with. So I started using this skill even with my fosters and I saw a great deal of positive change in their behavior. Animals who were absolutely scared, wouldn't trust any human would immediately want to come and bite, suddenly had a shift in their personality, like a 180 degree shift. And they would let me, you know, put my hand in their mouth and coax their medicines down. Or they would just allow me to do absolutely anything because I would respect what they would ask for. And that's, I think, that was the turning point in my life as a communicator, because that's when I realized that even though as humans, we come from a very good intention with rescue animals, and we want to do the best by them. So many times what we feel is their greatest good is probably not what they think their greatest good is. And at such times, it is better to rely on what they feel their greatest good is rather than trying to force our opinions on them. Because that's how they learn to trust us, that we give them the right of being an equal and not constantly look at ourselves as the caregivers or the superior species in the context of, you know, I will take care of you. They don't need that. They can take care of themselves provided we give them that right to do uh, that. So from 2015 to 2017, it was just a personal thing for me. I never intended on doing this professionally. Uh, by the By the end of 2017, that's when my friends and family started to get to know that I do this and my numbers started getting circulated and people started calling me at all odd hours at two and three in the morning. And that's when I decided, okay, it's time I put some kind of structure to this, otherwise it's going to get out of hand. And I remember uh, December of 2017, Shannon, I had done about over 250 communications just as practice. And I still have a journal where I maintain my communication. I still have those dated and with the feedback because I was doing it for in exchange of feedback to get better at, at the skill. And that's when I thought, no, I'll charge a nominal fee so that, you know, there is some kind of streamlining to the work that I'm doing. And I don't drain myself out by constantly just going on and on and on with this. And I honestly thought once I start charging, no one's going to come to me because nobody <laughs> wants to probably pay money for this. <laughs> but that didn't happen, fortunately. Uh, people kept coming and that's how I gradually started doing it professionally. And since I came from a learning and development background, six months later, when a group of rescuers reached out and said, why don't you teach us? That came to me very naturally because that's that's what I'm passionate about the most, the teaching part of it, because that's what I've been doing for the past 13 years of my life anyway. So uh, then that happened and that's where my journey began in 2018. So I've been doing this as a professional since 2018. It's been four years now, but I'm doing it Consciously, I've been doing it since 2015, uh, but I think I've always been doing it. And I was very open to the idea of the fact that animals and nature can talk to us. 
What a beautiful, beautiful unfolding. I, and I'm sure, it, you know, moving through it um, from the front end maybe didn't feel so intuitively guided. It didn't feel yes. so continuous and contiguous in terms of, you know, everything that came before making sense a little bit later on. But looking back with that that hindsight, it it really does feel like there is serendipity, but not coincidence. I loved what you just Absolutely. what you said about that. And I really want to encourage you, if you're listening to Akshaya's story, to think about, you know, or if you're watching us on, on YouTube, to think about your own journey and think about where, you know, the moment when your interest in being able to communicate across species boundaries, when did that start? You know, do you have a buried memory? Do you have faint recollections or maybe vivid memories of, of your best friend? And that best friend came from a different species. And think about, you know, and, and drop into your heart space and, and feel for what quality was there that made that relationship so special that really that your heart would just sing when you were in the company of your animal friend or it could be an animal you're sharing your life with now and consider whether there might be information and love and encouragement flowing to you from that animal and maybe your mind isn't isn't um, really understanding how to receive it and process it yet, but maybe in your heart, you know, it's there. And that's kind of, that's the work that we're doing because, and I love how you said when you were starting to realize that your schedule was getting a little crazy and your phone was ringing at hours, you needed to be resting. And you thought, you know what, let me take this seriously. Let me honor the importance of the work that I'm doing and put some structure around it and consider how I can best serve these, these uh, families, these interspecies families who are reaching out to me for help because, you know, you, there's no reason I, I hear this all the time. Oh, well, I don't want to do it professionally or, or maybe people are part of religious communities in different areas around the world. And they, and maybe there isn't as much openness as you experienced in your community when you started sharing the work that you, that you do now, but consider that there are all kinds of reasons why you might want to enter into this work and it doesn't have to be going public or going pro it can't i love that the rescue organization reached out to you and how forward thinking and open-minded these people are and i feel like it's got to be something in your personality as well though which is kind of a thread in your story your openness invites the openness of others and so, you know, those of you who are listening, you may want to reach out to Akshaya. You may want to consider what are some different ways that I could honor the animals who wish to speak with me without having to change the whole course of my life. You know, I'm, I'm, right. I love that your profession prior to, to starting your, your animal communication business or, or, or work, if you will, is, you know, so complementary to the work that you do now. So consider, you know, what areas of, as you're listening, what areas of your life might be subtly tapping you on the shoulder and saying, you know, this could be a really good fit. This is a skill set I already have and I could apply my passion for animals and it doesn't have to be, you know, we're always looking for these big booming voices from the sky or these big shifts and, you know, it can be really subtle. And in fact, animal communication often is. And I'd love for you to share a little bit more if you're, if you're open to it, what it feels like, because there's a lot of curiosity around that. How does the mess? How do the messages arrive? How do you know you're 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 that? I, I don't even love to say that you're doing it. How do you know it's happening? Yeah, and happening. you're you're participating in that conversation, especially when you don't know that you're participating. <laughs> how can you start to pick up on it? Yeah, and I think this is one of the most commonly asked questions, uh, not only by people who are just starting out, but also by people who are doing this for some time and still are trying to figure out a way to understand what is real versus what is their projection. Because I think that is one of the biggest obstacles 
a lot of communicators face personally for me and this is something that i even tell my uh, tell people who attend my courses is that learn to be a little shameless when it comes to animal communication because your conscious mind is going to constantly keep telling you that this is just your imagination since you are putting your conscious mind in such an uncomfortable position in for years and years we've been taught to think logically think within the box within the structure of what is tangible what is quantifiable and uh, unfortunately there is not a lot of tangibility to what we do or there is not instant tangibility at least yes you can see the animal respond a certain way to the communication if they are unwell or you know a behavioral change but that comes over time it may not be as quick as in a verbal communication that we have with humans so the first thing on a lighter note i tell them live a little shameless it's okay this is a safe space for all of us to let down our inhibitions nobody is going to judge us because we are all in the same boat so be a little shameless and even if your conscious mind tells you that hey this is your projection i mean what the worst that would happen you know your partner who you are practicing with would simply tell you that no my animal isn't like that like that's the worst thing that can happen in your starting phases where you're just practicing but if you don't do that you're going to miss out on an opportunity to actually get a valid feedback from your partner wherein you have thought that it's a figment of your imagination you've not shared it only to later realize that oh my god you know this was what it was and i didn't say it to my partner and also to for us to check the validity whether it's right or wrong you need to have an answer first if you don't have an answer where are you going to check whether it's the right answer or the right wrong answer so focus on having an answer then go ahead to check whether it's right or wrong that's one second thing for me personally uh i make it very casual because if i have a lot of structure to it in the sense of i need to sit here or i need to do it this way or that way i will distance myself from it i if i make it very pure and pious then the likelihood of me integrating it into my life like it is today is very low so for me talking to animals talking to plants talking to landscapes any other element of nature comes as naturally as i would speak to my husband my my friend my mom my dad my in-laws so there is no difference between talking to a human companion versus talking to an animal or nature companion that you may have and that's why for me when i speak to them again it's a personal experience it's different for every communicator but for me it's like an internal dialogue that i have with my animal that i ask a question and i instantaneously verbalize the answer that the animal is sharing with me initially when you start doing this yes you may feel as though you are making up the answers but as you go ahead in your journey you practice with a few friends and family who can give you feedback you realize that even in the whole idea of making it up or guessing you are actually verbalizing what the animal wishes to share with you so my focus really is always on getting information doesn't matter how you get it rather than constantly focusing only on right and wrong right and wrong right and wrong because that's where most of us get get blocked i get blocked because i'm scared of getting a wrong answer if that fear is taken away from me it doesn't matter right then i can just receive openly whatever the animal wishes to share with me so for me it's like an internal dialogue and over time i have also learned that the quicker i verbalize those answers the more authentic they are the more time i wait it's like an open invitation to my brain to hey come make up a logical answer that i will find comfortable sharing it my human because as human beings we are trained to not respond to questions that are not directed towards us so if i intend to talking to my dog and i direct a question to my dog the likelihood of my brain wanting to answer it is naturally lowered because the question is not directed towards me at all it's when i wait and think oh my god i need an answer that makes sense that's like a subtle invite to my brain you know okay now i need your help to make sense and oh, then and only then will my brain want to answer it but otherwise most times 
my brain will not want to answer it because it's not intended towards me and that's how we are trained like if you and i are speaking very rarely will a third person just butt in the conversation or start answering mm-hmm. a question directed towards me because that's not what we do generally this is so true and i love how you're 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 helping your students to identify the little um tells if you will if the, the the mind says oh no it needs to make sense or what if this what if what if i'm talking to someone else's animal and they're concerned and the answer doesn't make sense to them and it's like you're kind of talking over the animal you're not even it's like asking a question and like you said and and then you know giving them like a list of possible options versus just allowing them to respond so um you know I, I, when i started my animal communication journey i kind of treated it like being in school because that that is the structure that we're given we're given and and the focus is very much on verbal heard conversation it's not about the other intuitive honey you're blowing out my mummy's eardrums again um <laughs> intuitive he loves mornings he, it's morning here it's evening there but um of course since these are pre-recorded we have to we have to work out the scheduling but it's so interesting because you know so often along my journey i you know when i started i thought oh you know i'll just enroll in a school and i'll Whoa. do my one big classroom and then i'll graduate and then i'll you know and and i learned very quickly what you were sharing earlier that there are so many different ways to experience this it's very deeply personal and there's different ways to teach it and so i can't I've lost count i've studied with anna breitenbach i've i'm i'm now probably on my i don't know my 7th or 8th teacher i'm just so curious about um different ways to experience it keep opening up myself because it is really a life journey as well as you know uh, something i want to be able to offer reliably to to others to be able to kind of tune in on demand but you know really recognizing that so many and so many of my teachers have said it's the information that it's kind of like an aha moment or a light bulb goes on it's the stuff that your mind couldn't make up if it tried it's the good stuff like you're waiting for you know something that doesn't make sense in your mind but somehow it makes sense in your gut you're like your gut is like oh man i never thought of that but that and then your brain will pop out with something stupid like and that makes perfect sense you know <laughs> like, but in a different way because here we're receiving now you know some people describe how they get a lot of verbal even though so so it's a, it's a subtle thing you know um the information may come to us at, in the form of words but it's not coming through the mental pathway so you know i i'd love to hear a little bit more about how you personally experience because your journey has been so organic and it it you yes. know so being able to return back to those earliest experience has that helped you to be able to kind of were you able to kind of remember back to it do you feel like you get um do you do have conversations where you you you're very much how do they clear audience um uh versus clear you know clear sense i get them i get them mixed up i'm supposed to sound like an expert i'm like i just say the four clears because i have the time can't remember which goes with seeing hearing knowing sensing <laughs> yeah so uh for me my my dominant clear right now is clear cognizance which is just the thoughts and the intuition uh, when i started out formally when i started learning formally and like you said even i have learned with five different communicators still continue learning because that's an amazing journey to understand how everybody teaches and different things that i could learn from everyone for my own personal journey so when i did start out formally i remember i was more of clear uh clairvoyant which is visuals and clair um uh clairvoyant and clair audience which is listening hearing yes. i would get messages uh which were a mix so i would get a pop of like image and then a few words sometimes or sometimes complete sentences because like i mentioned it's more of an internal dialogue for me where i'm asking a question and i'm verbalizing the answer that i received so the animal may or may not share the answers in those sentences but that's how my uh, 
body, my intuition, my energy is translating it for me, what the animal is sharing with me. However, now I've reached a point where these are just thoughts for me. I can't really differentiate whether I receive a visual or um, um, audio message or a feeling also. Very rarely do I actually receive very strong feelings for me. These are just thoughts, thoughts in my head. But with practice now, I know that they are coming from the animal, even though there may not be a real tangible difference between my own thoughts and um, what the animal is sharing. And just to go back to what you shared, a, a few people do say that, you know, it's like an aha moment where you know your mind can't make it up. But for me personally, so many times it's not. It's not an aha moment. It's not a eureka moment. It's something that is so innate, so natural, so subtle, like you said, that it's very difficult to like really differentiate between if I'm thinking of it or if the animal is sharing it with me. And that is because I believe that this is the most natural way of communication we all know as all species, irrespective of humans, animals, plants because it's given to us by mother nature. And as a mother, she will not differentiate saying, okay, I'll give it to birds and I won't give it to humans or I'll give it to Shannon and I won't give it to Akshaya. She's a mother. She will give everything to everyone equally. Uh, but unfortunately for us humans, we detach ourselves from that skill because again, it doesn't fit into our logical framework and focus more on the verbal communication part of it. And yet we retain that skill. You, we just need to flex that intuitive muscle a bit to start again. But we are always doing it, right? Like so many times you'll think of a person and that person calls you up. And you'll say, hey, I was just thinking about you. What a coincidence. But that is telling mm -hmm. you. That is the way we communicate. So many times when I'm craving to eat something and I go back to my mom's house, she would have cooked that for me, even without knowing that I'm going to come home. And I'll be like, oh my god I was just craving to eat this and you have made it for me or my husband and I would complete each other's sentences or the way a mother or a or any parent knows what their child wants even without the child explicitly verbalizing what they want are all instances of this beautiful connection that we have uh, with us communicators we've learned to put a word or terminology on it that okay this is animal communication or intuitive communication but with so many other people, it just exists. They may not necessarily say it is intuitive or telepathic. They would probably say it's by chance or guess or mm -hmm. um, coincidence. But it's there. It happens with everyone. And I have such a beautiful, very quick story about that. Um, when my, my tortoise, Malti, was a year old, she wandered off the lawn and went missing. And I was not an animal communicator at the time. I was, uh, I was, I, I hired animal communicators. I had no delusion. I mean, I was very much, and I was a freelance writer. That's what I, that's what I did. That's what I always wanted to do. I was, I just wasn't on my radar. And, and this experience completely reshaped uh, my trajectory because the first communicator I normally worked with was not available. She was in the middle of a massive, difficult move. But so the most she, she told me was she, Malti has headed north. She's not far. Um, and then I hired another animal communicator that I worked with very intensely. But the outset, the, uh, the outcome of it was basically she went north and she's not far. Then, uh, because I had a pretty strong social media presence because of my writing and, and this guy right here, um, uh, one of my uh, Facebook friends who lived in India uh, started messaging me and saying, have you found her yet? Have you found her yet? Look to the north. And the day that I found her, which was day six, it was um, it had been raining heavily. There was a period we later called the Memorial Day floods here in the U.S. And that it, she's the size of like, you know, my mouse, you know, and so out here in all of this, this this intense monsoon like weather and. So the day I found her, he had messaged me and he said, you will find her today. Look to the north, look under the bushes at a neighbor's house. And I kid you not, because I was so demoralized. I went out, I walked about two blocks to the right, dead north, under a flowering bush. There's my little girl. And so I messaged him back because, you know, we're just like casual Facebook friends. We both love animals. I said, what the heck? Like, 
dude, what are you like, did you do this? And he was like, no, it's just, it's just kind of a thing I, I have, you know, and he's in catering. Um, and so, you know, I just, for those of you who are listening, it's like, this is such an enrichment to your life. It's about realizing, I love that what you shared about mother earth and saying, you know, we're, we're all equally, um, blessed and, and we're all connected. And it's about remembering that we're a part of, we belong here too. You know, there's so much adversity in, uh, in our world today and looking at, you know, what humans are doing to animals. It's like, what are we doing for animals? How can we reconnect? Because the reconnection is where the healing begins for all of us. We all love this planet. I'm sure Mars is fantastic, but I personally love Mm -hmm. earth and I want to stay here, you know? And, and I mean, I like the, the opportunity to go if you want, but I love it here. And I really think that we can do great things with our animal friends. And so that really brings us, we're, we're kind of at time. Um, I know your time as a listener, as a watcher is valuable as well. I want to respect that. I want to respect your time at Chayo, but I would love to hear how people can get in touch with you, how they can work with you, how they can study with you, if that's of interest to them. Yes. So you can reach out to me on www.animalcommunication.in. That's my website. And through the website, you can also find links to all my social media. I have a YouTube channel with over 300 videos. So if anyone wants to just get a taste of what I do or look for free resources, you can find it there. On Facebook and Instagram, I'm at Animal Communication by Akshaya. But you can all find it on the website. So on your website. So if to anything that you, uh, how you can reach out to me would be available on my website. Yes. Perfect. And, I also and you have, have book. mentoring too, right? Yes, 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 I do. So I have a short course, a foundation course. I have a one month mentoring program. I also have a book. I'm the only Indian you author have to book? have actually published. Yes, I'm the only Indian author to have published a book on animal communication. And I'm very proud of it. And it's available internationally on Amazon. So yes, if that's something that you're in. You know, it's weird. I've been on the... Okay, I've been all over your website and I did not see that for some reason. Which the book, is, yeah, okay, yeah, which is totally, maybe I just got transfixed by something else, but fantastic. That's absolutely brilliant, you know, and, uh, and, and that's something else I love to do is I read all the books by other animal communicators. Mm. I'm constantly, I mean, we are such a, we are a community and uh, we learn from each other continuously. It's one of Absolutely. the best ways to continue to, to be open, to, to remain humble and honoring of our place in, in, in this, you know, truly, um, okay, I just, I just lost my train of thought because sometimes my, my heart is just like, and my eardrums um, <laughs> just kind of take over, but I just, I want to encourage you, um, if you're listening, if you're watching, if you have questions for me or for Akshaya, please um, let us know if you, um, if you have a friend who enjoys these kinds of conversations, please forward the podcast. You don't have to be aspiring to benefit greatly from, from hearing the, the wonderful stories that are shared each week on Let's Talk to Animals. Um, these are the, some of the best ways that you can just start tuning in with your own companion animals and start reconnecting your intuition so that instead of, you know, a major medical issue, you, you, you catch those early intuitive, those hunches that maybe just like what you were saying, you know, I, you're thinking of someone and they're going to call you, or you think of something you want to eat and your mom makes it. It's like, if you're thinking about your animal and how are they well, and you know, it's like 99%. Yeah. But there's this one little thing. And it's like, you can just start to tune in and you can learn, you can deepen your relationship and your connection and feel closer and feel more supported and befriended in your life. Um, I also would love to invite those of you who are interested in a little free five-day crash course, so to speak, um, an adventure. I have a five-day free animal communication camp on animallovelanguages.com under Learn With Me. Uh, You can find a four-part intuitive pet parent series that's designed specially. It's also free for um, pet parents. And most importantly, you can find links to all of our podcast and vlogcast episodes so that you never miss an episode. Um, Hopefully, you'll give us five 
five stars or uh, 50 stars, Pearl suggests, if that's available in your area. Mm. And Akshaya, <laughs> again, it's an honor and a delight. I'm going to let you go because I know it's late where you are and you have carved out volunteering your time to share your story here. And we're very, very grateful. So thank you. Thank you so um, missing, much, Shannon. Thank you so missing much. Missing your beautiful country and hoping I can I can one day, maybe I'll even get to meet you in person. Who knows? Absolutely. Maybe I'll get to come and take one of your courses. That would be so much fun. <laughs> All righty, everyone. Bye for now. Um, check back with us next week for another wonderful, fresh episode. And please know you have our hearts. So have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.